the, the Name Jar by Yang Sook Choi. Through the school bus window, you and I looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yoon Hai's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she said. My name, Yoon Hai wondered. Again, she took the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yoon Hai, surprising her. Yoon Hai looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Yoon Hai answered quick, quickly, putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yoon Hai, said Yoon Hai. Oone? The girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, 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 Oone? Some kids chanted. Oh no, Yoon Hai corrected. It's spelled U N H E I. It's pronounced Yoon Hai. Oh, it's Yu Hai the boy said, like, you, hey! What about, hey, you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yoon Hai hurried to get off. You, hey, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yoon Hai felt herself blush. Yoon Hai stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? asked a curly-haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Yoon Hai nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Cococtus, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Cococtus thanked him and greeted Yoon Hai or Yoon Hai. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yoon Hai smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yoon Hai pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kakakta showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and she needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yoon Hai kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yoon Hai? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yoon Hai simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandmother. I'm glad you're learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Yoon Hai. But, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with a surprise. Why, Yoon Hai is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a na name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yoon Hai complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yoon Hai, the mother said. That's a good thing. Yoon Hai just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yoon Hai and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They pass Fidel's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. 
Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was both in English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Unhai's favorite for soup. It made Unhai smile. Just because we moved to America, her mother says, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smotted Unhai. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Yunhai nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Yunhai, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Yunhai nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl. Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yoon-hai. That evening, Yoon-hai stood in front of the bathroom window. Mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me. She worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name did Susie, said the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning when Unhai arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Unhai took one out and read it out loud. Daisy, that's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want said Cindy, who sat next to her. Yoon-hai took out the rest of the paper. To Mella, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Yoon-hai nodded and unfolded another piece of paper. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Yoon-hai's face. Ralph quickly said, we put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all and you'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Yoon Hai looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yoon-hai turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you, don't you have any name? Yoon-hai thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and she took up the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp. She said, my grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, you need. I said, and then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller and fuller with names. Yoon Hai read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I put in three more, said Ralph. Madison Park and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everybody thought about this. When Yuna hey, got him. 
when you and I got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Yunhai, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here, the moon is up, but there, the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yunhai, your grandma forever. Yunhai took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yunhai walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yunhai. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yunhai replied. She felt as if she were back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Yunhi? He asked her with his eyes open wide. Yunhai quickly looked at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yunhai. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yunhai, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Yunhai smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Yunhai, Joey said to her. She left before he, she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Yunhai came to class early to look at all the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Yunhai slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yunhai said. It wasn't on Mr. Kakakto's desk or on any other desk. And it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As the other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Cacoctus came in and Ralph shouted at him, The name jar is gone! The jar with all the names in it! Gone? Mr. Cacoctus replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yunhai, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Yunhai nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself. She said. Yunhai wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and the funny names you thought of for me, she told the class. But I realized that I like my name best, and so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yunhai means grace. Grace, grace, Inhai, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Unhai, Unhi, Unhei. Yunhai said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better, even Mr. Cacoctus. They applauded Yunhai's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yunhai. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Cacoctus reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yunhai heard her new friend say goodbye. Goodbye, Yunhai. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yunhai. Yunhai said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yunhai, Yunhai, come downstairs, Mother called up to Yunhai. Your friend is here. Yunhai rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? Yunhai said breath asked Yunhai breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? he asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yunhai said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yunhai. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it.
Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt patch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with, a beautiful, with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on a piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, read Yoon Hai. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back.